lead. And up next, it's Deshaun Watson. Solid performance a week ago, throwing for three touchdowns. It's the Browns and the Hawks, and it comes your way next. With Mount Rainier in the distance, there are few cities finer on a clear afternoon than this one, and we have a picture-perfect day for football at Lumen Field in Seattle. Today, we've got a Week 8 matchup on tap here, as it'll be the Cleveland Browns taking on the Seattle Seahawks. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you look at this Seahawks team as they get ready here. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on. Lurching closer toward the midway point of this NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. This taken in right around the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. So the Seahawks ready to take over on offense. And it is a first-time pro bowler who leads him out, Charles, in his 11th year now, Geno Smith. When the Seahawks named Smith the starter last season, it gave him an opportunity he wasn't sure he would get again. And then he became one of the best quarterbacks in football and sustained it across a full 17 games when he come back player of the year. Saved his career with last season and keeps the Seahawks as true contenders. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Well, this defense for the Browns, they were excellent a week ago in that victory over Indianapolis. Yeah, and what stood out to me on tape, the way they were flying to the football. So that tells me that they've got all their assignments down and they're playing with extreme confidence. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. A game there of 21 yards. Second and short, that's a run down. So it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. The Seahawks sitting at a very solid 4-2 record through the first six weeks. And they were winners their last time out, so they'll be looking to make it two in a row. And so much about football, partner, comes down to mindset. Being in the right frame of mind in the best way to get in that good frame of mind, winning. So they come in feeling good. They've got the home crowd behind them. I think they're going to be tough to beat in this one. Throwing on third down, Smith. And that is incomplete. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. And here's Dixon to punt now as he gets this one away. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. Now the Cleveland offense ready to go to work behind the three-time Pro Bowler Deshaun Watson in his second season now as a Brown, number seven overall. And he ought to have a lot of pep in his step after last week's performance because he did exactly as you want him to play if you're a coach. Three touchdown passes, zero interceptions, which usually means you're making a lot of right decisions out there. And got him the win. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Back to throw, Watson. His throw incomplete. He was looking for the Michigan Wolverine, Donovan Peoples-Jones. And it's second down. You talk about this Seahawk defense. Yeah, they played well against the pass, currently ranked seventh in the NFL. And I'm struggling a little bit trying to really categorize this crew. They're top ten in the league against the pass, but the bottom half of the league in sacking the quarterback. That doesn't make sense. Imagine if this group ever put pressure on the QB, they'd easily move into the top five. And CD, defensively, you're going against a hot quarterback coming off a three-touchdown game in their victory a week ago. But what's the big key for them to try to slow him down? You ask all the tough questions, don't you, partner? Because with this guy, if you blitz him, he takes advantage of that man coverage and burns you. But if you bring on those extra DBs, he sits back there and does what he wants. To me, it's going to be those DBs. When they catch the ball, 
big time tackles really put it on those receivers. 16 yards, a little deja vu from the previous play where they got 16. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 38. Here's Watson. And that's going to be caught by Peoples Jones. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And that will bring up second down. Coming right, this is Chubb on the toss. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there. Now it'll be third down. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Watson. And it is caught. And he's going to have a Browns first down as he's able to get eight yards there on third and five. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping in one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Jaron Reed muscles his way in for the sack. And, of course, that's not an easy man to sack. You know how elusive he can be trying to get outside of the pocket. That was a great play on the defensive side. Now, I wonder what was going through his mind because he didn't seem as committed to using his legs to pick up yardage. He wanted to keep that play alive, so either take off and go or throw it away. But he held on to the football and ended up getting sacked. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Watson now to throw. To the right side, and he's got more complete. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 13-yard line. Needed 13, they got 14 on third down. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. From the red zone now, Watson. That is caught left side by Bryant. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. We're scoreless after one. The start of the second quarter, and it's the Browns in control of the football. This is second and eight. As they've got it as we resume action. They go with Chubb on second down. And a tough run gets him just inside the 10 to the 9, but no further. Just a couple on the ground there, and that's going to bring up third and about six. A shotgun snap for Watson. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Elijah Moore. His second touchdown on the season. And the Browns post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. They went five wide in that offensive set. And racing, going three wide is a big deal. To go five, how about the way that they finish things off? <laughs> Did you just fit a race car reference into the game? Zoom, zoom. How about the way that you play? When you go five wide, that means you're going fast now. Zoom, zoom indeed. Extra point good by Hopkins. And that makes the score 7-0. So that drive spans 13 plays. And it was finished off by Elijah Moore on the touchdown reception. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. And Walker has it. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. They run with a second-year man. It's Kenneth Walker, and he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Here's Smith. 
That's complete to DK Metcalf. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. Back to throw, Smith. A quick throw, but incomplete. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it. Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else, and now it's third and ten. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of him. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. On fourth down, ready to punt, Michael Dixon. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Browns will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. The Cleveland offense ready to go. They have to be thrilled with that first drive that got them the touchdown. Now they'll be looking to make it a two-score advantage here on the road. And you know they spent all week in practice in meetings talking about taking an early advantage. Being the road team, going up a score, that takes the crowd out of the game and puts some doubt in the minds of their opponents. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Here's Watson. And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. It's second down and ten. Throwing again is Watson. This is the tight end, the Joku. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. To the air yet again, Watson. Right back to Njoku. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. To throw is Watson. That's to the right side and complete to Njoku. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 30. And the Browns first down. On first down, Watson dumps this to his running back, Chubb. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup of someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third and inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. This will be the eighth play of the drive, and it's third and inches. Watson looks to throw again. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A final shot before the break, Watson. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. So it looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. 
I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Hi again, everybody. Let's get you caught up with what's going on around. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. And we will not have a run back here as the second half starts with a touchback. The Browns offense set to go to work to begin this third quarter. This offense set to begin the third quarter. And Charles, if they had a checklist of things they wanted to accomplish in the first half, certainly at the top of that list would be having the lead. And they've got that here. That's always the most important box to check, isn't it? But also, they've had some success in their passing game. So probably an empty box establishing the run. They're on pace for fewer than 100 yards in this one. So now they want to make sure that they get that going so they truly have a control in this ball game. And down the stretch, being able to be balanced, either throw it or run it, and try and win this ball game. This short pass into the hands of Njoku, and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A gain of 10 as they look to add on to this 10-point lead. On first down, they'll run with Chubb, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Now a throw here going to be taken in by the tight end to Joku. And that will wind up moving the chains again as the tackle is going to be made at the Seahawks 44-yard line. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. And down to the 41. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. Third down throw incomplete as well. Nice call by the defense there on third down. Just flood the field with extra defensive backs in their dime package. Nowhere to go with the football. Forces the incompletion. And Bojorquez on to punt as he gets it away. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. Now we'll see what this Seahawks offense has in store with their first possession of the second half. Now this game, it has obviously been all about the defense on both sides of the football. Which offense is going to break through here? We'll see if they can do it on this drive. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. Back to Walker on first down. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, they still have time to get them established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. To throw on second down is Smith. And an off-balance throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. I'm getting the sense that this offense is getting frustrated. Here we are into the third quarter, and they've had plenty of opportunities to get in sync. Thus far, that hasn't happened. They're looking for answers, both on the sidelines and in the huddle looking at each other. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. A really good pickup of 28 yards. But look what we have here, a sustained drive, and that was certainly a wall in the first half. They really struggled to try and move the football. But right now, they certainly seem to have the formula working. Let's see if they can keep it up. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. 
A quick throw out to Lockett. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Now Smith. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. The passing windows are just not there. And that's just another example of how great this defense has been all game long. And that's exactly what a top 10 defense can do. They can really change the game tempo and frustrate you as you try to execute offensively. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns 19. Hang on now. We're going to pause here. We've got an injured player. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury. And we'll be back in a moment. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the red zone now, Smith. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Here now, second and four. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four. Now it's Smith. Going right back to Fan. It'll be a gain of just a yard. And now it's third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Again, Smith. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. And the red zone precision is the watchword. If the throw's a little too early, too late, maybe off a little bit. Going to be a good chance at any attempt is going to be a contested one, and that one falls incomplete. And he'll be taken down after a minimal pickup, and that will take us to the end of quarter number three. So following the failed try on fourth down, we'll change ends and change possession. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Browns drive about to get started. Big stop on the turnover on downs to get the football back, and now it's just all about salting this one away. Yeah, just slowly bleed the clock away. Clock's definitely on your side. And, you know, when we talk about analytics in the game, what is this one, the advanced win metrics? Because if you take care of the football here, bleed the clock down, with they about 95% chance of winning. Oh, yeah, I'd say 95 or better. I, and I know you always say it, every coach does. It's just protecting the football at this point. And knowing that the defensive guys, they're coming after the ball more than they are the person. They want to knock it free. Throwing on third down, Watson. And he's going to go down. Back at his own five-yard line, it's a sack. And now after that sack, we'll pause here a moment because someone was shaken up on that play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. The punt team on now is from their end zone. They get it away. A 45-yard punt for their on the return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And you're still in this game. I mean, yeah, you haven't scored. Offense obviously has struggled, but you're only two scores down, so all hope not lost. Not at all, because we're talking about the NFL, and teams can score fast in this league. Quick strikes, you're right back in it. You're exactly right. Keeping hope alive. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Now Gino. That's into the hands of his tight end, Will Disley. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. And the Seahawks on third down, two for five to this point. This time it's third and three. Here's Smith. And yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Desperation time for Smith on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. Pete Carroll rolled the dice, but it didn't work out. And this Browns defense stands tall. 
So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. And Chubble trying the middle here. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Wentz to throw on third and one. That is caught, and he is going to have a Browns first down, and comfortably so as he gets five there on third and a yard. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ball game. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts. They'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And they'll hustle up to stop him well shy of the first, right around the 15. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So that, not just important in the fact that it widens their lead, but really that was a textbook job of just hanging on to the football. And we know all the time that coaches talk about time of possession. Sometimes it's a stat that doesn't matter much, but in this drive, it matters a lot. They want to reduce time and score points and lock this game down. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. So Gino and the Seahawks down by 13, a minute 44 to go. They've yet to score all game long, but now they need to do so twice in short order to have a shot. Smith to throw. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. Well, they've certainly had trouble blocking this defense through three and a half quarters, so I don't expect it to get any easier now. You know they're going to be sitting back and waiting on everything, and they force an incompletion there. And Smith's throw into the hands of Lockett. Boy, just a gigantic play here, both sides. This is third and inches. Smith's going to throw it. And a big loss here as he's taken down. No choice but to go. Here's fourth down now. Smith. And it's knocked away and incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And now the football is going to go over, already being placed at the 15-yard line. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. The Browns in victory formation now as they take the knee. Wentz with a kneel down, and that will be the final act of this game. So Cleveland able to come away with the victory here, and they did it in shutout fashion. Impressive. Would it be too bland of a statement to say they didn't have the greatest day offensively? I mean, you did know. enough, though. Did enough, but yeah, you're right. Most games, it wouldn't have been enough. So they've got to go into the locker room and applaud their defensive mates and say, guys, you really